Morning, YouTubers. <laughs> On today's episode, which is part four, well, 4.75, we'll call it, we're going to go back and revisit the previous two videos where we welded quarter inch thick steel with the Flux Core Titanium 125 from Harbor Freight. So, my recommendation watch the two previous videos, come back, watch this. It'll make a lot more sense. I was welding quarter inch thick steel and in the first video had a ton of porosity. Second video switched to a different wire because in the first one we were running US Forge. Second video I ran 030 Lincoln Electric NR211 wire. Porosity was a lot better. This video we're going to run 035 NR211. So the same Company's wire, same spec, bigger diameter wire. And I'm going to run a bunch of test welds. We're going to cut and etch them and look at them, get an idea what's going on, if anything's changed or if it's the same. And I kind of have a lot of thoughts, at least right now. We'll see. End of the results uh, might dictate something else, but let's get into it. Before I load this, roll on the machine here. I just wanted to mention something. If you look at this, it's kind of overall poorly wound. Now this is only a one pound spool, so the inner part, most of it's just dead space rather than wire. But compared to like that US Forge, I think they could do a better job of wrapping this up. And I think that's why with the 030 version, it kind of seemed to pulse a little bit in the welder. I think that's just because the speed is picking up and going down based on how this is wrapped. So just something interesting. All right, I got the wire loaded in the machine. My settings that I have it at are H and almost nine. Now the chart inside the machine has no setting for quarter inch thick steel. The max it goes up to is 316, even with 035 wire. But it basically gives the same settings for this wire, 035 is 030. So I just set it at a round H and 9. We'll tack this up. I'm going to fully weld it. If it looks halfway decent, I'm going to weld the other side right away. Then we'll clean it up and see what we got. Oh, help if I had a ground clamp on, wouldn't it? My God. All these years and I still... Forget to do that. Well, the moment of truth. I can't see anything until I get it close to the camera. Oh, we still have some porosity in there at the start, but overall looking pretty good. Let's flip it. The second pass that was hotter looks a lot better. I mean, they're both actually looking pretty good. Interesting. I'm going to bump the settings up a little bit and then do another fillet weld on those other two plates there. And just with a little bit hotter settings, we're going to see if we can't get rid of that porosity on the first pass. All right, our new settings are just about I, a little bit over I, and just a little bit over 9. A good way to tell if your stick out is right is when you're done welding. Look at how much wire is still sticking out. This is about a half inch, which is what this manufacturer recommends for this wire. 
if it's like way close to the tip, then your arc gap or your, excuse me, your contact tip to work distance is far too close. If it's sticking way out, then you need to shorten it. Oh, look at that. Hit the duty cycle. Machine shut down or I tripped the breaker. That's pushing it pretty hard. Oh, tripped the breaker. So we definitely max this thing out. I'll go reset it. All right, we are back up and running. So the welder appears to be fine. So that's pretty interesting. I mean, without a doubt, <laughs> we were running uh, that machine's max output. It's on a dedicated 20 amp circuit, so nothing else in this whole place is using that circuit it's on right now, and it tripped it. So I guess how practical is it to be able to weld with this at these kind of settings if it's gonna trip a 20 amp breaker? I mean, putting it on a 30 amp breaker would be kind of foolish. So anyways, I'm gonna cut the wire off. We're gonna buff this up and we're gonna see what we got. Let's see what we got. That looks real clean on there. That was the first pass. Second pass, real clean as well, except the end. All right, well, let's do a cut and etch on both of these and talk about the results. Well, we got the moment of truth. I can kind of play scientists now. So this is our first pass with the 035 wire. You can see we still have a little bit of porosity there, but overall the rest of the weld looks acceptable. The back side of this. float out much uh, smoother, definitely a lot more heat. Same settings, but the plate was preheated, so had a lot to do with it. Let's take a look at the cut and etch. Can see uh, very good penetration for both of them. Don't mind that little gap down there. These plates, especially this top plate, wasn't milled flat or anything, so it's going to peel up since this wasn't sitting perfectly flat. So just ignore that. But realistically, both sides have great penetration. Even the side that uh, was run cold, so very good there. Now the second set of plates, I bumped up the settings a little bit. So the wire feed was just a pinch, and then the voltage I went from, I believe, H to I. So up the voltage and produce these plates. So the initial looks a little bit hotter than the initial pass on this set. The second pass, you can definitely tell being that these plates are plenty preheated, flattened out. And then of course the machine tripped the breaker on us. And I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of this video. Well, let's look at the cut and etch on this. If you look at that, there we go. So the initial pass, yep, that's the initial pass. Despite having increased settings, didn't penetrate more. Now the weld appears to be thicker, but rather than penetrating in, it just kind of flowed out further from the root of the joint. The second pass with the preheated plates flowed out significantly more into the plate, so more increased penetration. However, as you saw, it kicked the breaker out and I was unable to finish the weld there, but quite interesting. And I'm gonna put up a picture of both of the plates together and we can talk a little bit about this. So these results are kind of interesting. The weld on the left run with lower values for both wire feed speed and voltage actually penetrated more 
It almost seems to me like the weld on the right was widening out and the throat depth was increasing, but it wasn't actually biting in more. So there is a practical limit to what you can run before you start losing penetration. The weld on the left I rather have overall than the weld on the right. And this really drives home that just because a weld looks a certain way or you increased your settings doesn't mean that what's underneath it in the root is better. So that's the importance of doing cutting and etching to see where you're actually at. All right, guys, I guess this leads to the conclusion. So done a bunch of test welds on quarter, bunch of different wires, different settings, found a lot of different results. Overall, I would say that this machine, the Titanium 125, is capable of welding quarter inch, but it's really on, I would say, the absolute limit. Now you can make welds on thinner material, no problem, and arguably you could weld thicker material with this machine. However, you're going to run the risk of having porosity issues and you're going to lack penetration. And that's kind of what I'm seeing based on this. Now, one of the interesting things with the newer test plates that I ran with 035 wire, well, besides the machine kicking out because it's simply pulling too much for the breaker. So if you're going to run this on a 110 volt, 15 amp breaker, you can forget about trying to weld quarter. It's going to trip your breaker. But I found it interesting that we actually lost penetration going up in settings. So you can see this weld visually looks acceptable. However, the penetration isn't as good as one run at lower settings. So that's something you wanna be aware of. Well, where does that leave us? Well, there's a couple things that I find kind of interesting. There's a lot of conflicting information on the internet about what flex core wire is actually good for. Now, this Lincoln wire is rated for 5 16 thick steel. That's over this thickness, and the 035 is also. After like Googling stuff for a while, the general consensus out in the welding community seems to be that flex core wire that's 030 should only really be used for 3 16 thick steel and below and that 035 should be used for above that, which I kind of understand. I mean, you're not putting down big welds on thin material, so 035 is definitely on thinner material going to be too much. But I also believe that the 035 wire has a higher flux to wire ratio. So if you're going to be welding thicker steel, especially in an outdoor environment, or wind or something could blow by your weld, I would highly recommend using 035. Here in my shop, there's no breeze, there's no wind. I'm welding on perfectly clean steel. Like this is the best case scenario. Out in the real world, you're not gonna have those kind of luxuries. So the extra flux I think that the 035 will have will probably benefit you. The other thing that I find interesting is, is that our settings, as I increased the amperage, it lost penetration. And that's one of those things that really drives home the point. This welder, 125 amp, can weld quarter inch. It can weld, you could probably get a weld like this on three eighths, maybe even half inch thick steel. But the question is, is that, is it a strong weld? If you don't have the root penetration of the weld, it's not going to be that strong. So it pays to really understand the limits of your process. So the conclusion of this is the Titanium 125 is capable of welding quarter inch thick steel. But the issue is, is that with 030 wire, I think you're going to have porosity issues. And then with 035 run hot enough to where you get the fusion, you run the risk of tripping a breaker. So realistically, I would say very intermittent use. You could use it for quarter inch thick or maybe even thicker, and it'll do a good job. You may see porosity. You may have a little bit of a lack of fusion. And more than likely, you're, you're going to trip the breaker out that it's hooked to. 
but overall I would say the practical limits of the machine are pretty accurate to what they claim on the packaging which is somewhere around 18 20 gauges pretty easy to weld with it up to like 3 16 thick if you weld stuff within that range with pretty much any of these wires you're going to get pretty good results if you're going to weld quarter inch thick or really thick metal i would highly recommend running 035 lincoln electric wire um, i don't have 035 of the other two but honestly just spend the money if you want to weld that uh, and get the lincoln electric but yeah overall i guess couple interesting things I didn't expect to have happen, but I learned a lot. I hope you guys learned a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, thanks for watching.